Hey, welcome back for our final, actually our final group study in the series, Getting Clear on Why You're Here. Um, I hope, by the way, that that doesn't mean that your group is done. We hope that you'll go on and go find another study and and keep growing together. Um, but I, we, we are talking this session about how we've been sent on a mission of love. And I'm here with right. McKenna from yes. Westside. And uh, McKenna, tell everybody what you do at Westside. Yeah, absolutely. So I do a few things. I mainly um, am a part of our youth ministry here. I shepherd our high school girls. Um, I also am adventuring out and going to be teaching here pretty soon. Yep. So I'm pretty stoked about that to see just the way that you know God uses me. I also do some hosting around here, some activities like this as well. So really just wherever I'm needed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's been fun to see you, your growth and God's been using you in big ways. Oh and, my gosh. In ways I never, yeah. ever, yeah, <laughs> ever imagined. A, yeah, totally. Hopefully that's encouraging to everybody who's participating. Cause even last week we were talking about spiritual gifts, you know, yeah. how when you explore those, it opens up such new opportunities. Mm-hmm. But for this session, we're talking about that God has sent us on a mission of love. And that reminds me of my first job, actually. Um, well, not my first job, my first real job, you know, your that first had, big boy job. Yeah, big boy job. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I wasn't washing cars at the car lot. It was something else. So uh, I I got a job at this place in Wilsonville, Oregon called the Glass Depot. It was like an auto glass distribution center. And so uh, I walk, I was 17 and I was by far the youngest employee. I think there was one other 20 something there, but everybody else is like, I don't know. I thought they were like a hundred, you know, <laughs> Pretty much, I was yeah. 17. <laughs> and, uh, and so I felt like I, I was really nervous to start right. this job. I walk in, they give me this uniform, you know, I got my name on my uniform and mm-hmm. hand me the keys to this truck. And, uh, and I just felt like, oh my gosh, the weight of the world is on my shoulders because I could mess up, you know? Yeah. And, but, but I knew that I was representing this company. I want to do a good job. Mm-hmm. And in many ways, I think that's kind of how it is when you realize I'm sent on a mission of love for God. Hopefully right. we don't feel like the weight of the world is on our shoulders, right. Right. but, but hopefully we do feel like, you know, we're representing the God that loves everyone and has sent us all on mission. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so we want to, we want to talk a little bit about that in this session. And I want McKenna to share a little bit about it too. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I actually would like to to share some scripture with you guys. So I'm going to be reading out of um, Acts 1, uh, 6 through 8. So it goes, so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, had the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So what really always, I mean, I've read this scripture quite a few times, what always sticks out to me is to the ends of the earth, you know, because you think back, so... You know, this is all happening in Israel and like this very, you know, just this smaller community. And I think Jesus is thinking so far ahead, knew so far that the witnesses were going to be to the ends of the earth, like so past Israel, you know. And so that just makes, I don't know, me feel just important, you know, like even then I feel like he had me in mind that I was going to be a witness as well that was going to be making an an impact. Yeah. And it's just so like, this is 2000 years ago, you know, but, but that's for all of us, you know, we're all included in that because we are, I mean, to the ends of the earth, essentially over here. Yeah. Yeah, It feels like we're at the end of the earth, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. (laughs) So it's just, it's so special. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So how has that played out for you? I mean, we've all been, I mean, shoot, if anybody is a follower of Jesus, then the reason why they were able to make that connection was because somebody listened to this, right? And somebody took that seriously and shared with them. Right. But how's that been a part of your experience? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so when I think about this, the first person that comes to mind is always my grandmother. Mm. So um, she was definitely like the spiritual leader of our family. And I mean, I remember being a little girl and she used to be like, McKenna, I could not spend one day without the Lord. And, I, and my, I'm just a little girl. I didn't have a relationship yet. So I was kind of like, oh, like, why don't you just keep on living, you know? <laughs> um, and so she she really made an impact on me because I got to see how, you know, the Lord really helped her through her everyday life. But truly what really made the impact for me, though, Gabe, was, I mean, my obedience 
to being a witness for Jesus. So, and, and I mean, and that actually began with the spiritual gifts workshop when I found out that oh. I was a shepherd. Okay. And, um, I, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to use those gifts. I, I knew that I had something to offer. And so I started, you know, shepherding with the kids and started sharing my experiences with the kids. And I cannot, I mean, the fruit that has come from that is just like incredible. Our youth ministry has just been soaring off. I think already this year we've had I think 20 students be baptized, yeah. you yeah, know, that's been yeah, we're over our COVID numbers. And it all started with like me, you know, um, being a witness and sharing my experiences, but also the other, you know, youth leaders in our ministry as well. So yeah, really it was, came down to my, I guess, devotion to being a witness. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, when you, when you feel that tap on the shoulder, to have, you know, it, it really all, all comes down to conversations and demonstrations. Exactly. You know, where it's like, I'm going to share the love of God with my words <clears throat> and with my deeds. That's you know, right. and, um, and I think it can't be either or. That's one of the things that we've been convinced about here at Westside is that, especially in a city, in an environment that is a little jaded about right. faith, right. you know, mm -hmm. um, it's important that we don't just have words. Because if we mm -hmm. don't have deeds to back up those words, it's very empty. It, but it, yeah. on the flip side, if we only have deeds and we don't have words, um, sometimes people don't know what we actually represent, you know? Yeah, or and why so, we do what we why do. Why we do what we do. You know, or yeah. what is it that makes us do what we do, Yeah, I think is the biggest thing. Totally, mm -hmm. yeah. So I would love to hear your thoughts on, um, you know, let's say let's say everybody that's in group and yeah. everybody at West side and, and maybe even some other churches, we all just get all serious about this. And we're like, okay. you know what? I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be on mission. I'm going to be sent on a mission of love. I'm going to use my testimony. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to pray for my friends, family, coworkers, neighbors. I mean, I'm going to go for it Yeah. and really see what God would do. What do you think would happen? I mean, what do you think that would look like? I mean, like? gosh, it almost sounds like heaven, but, yeah, it does. <laughs> but, um, I guess, you know, when you're, when you're saying, this, um, what really comes to me is just, you know, being that light. So I think of myself, like, you know, kind of like this candle, I think of myself and, um, you know, I'm, I'm filled with the light of the Lord because I'm, I'm so connected with him and I've had so many experience with, you know, experiences with him. And then I think about, you know, going out into, to the, you know, kind of the darkness of our world. And, you know, I just kind of imagine seeing like a friend, or a family member, and you can see that their light is dim. And I just imagine myself going up to them and saying, hey, friend, like, my light used to be very, very dim. And um, this is what fueled my light, and this is what turned things around for me. And hey, that was Jesus. And I think maybe Jesus could do that for you too. And then start just sharing my experience with them and fueling into their light. And now they're a bright light as well with me too. And now this person, because Jesus has made such a tangible difference in their life, decides, hey, I want to go out and find a light too, or a dim light, and then brings another person in, and you know, so on and so forth. Eventually, we're this huge beacon of hope, this huge beacon of light in our community, in our city, in our state, in our country, in our world. And all of us are saying, hey, Jesus is the one who did this for me, and He can do this for you too. So yeah, that's it's a beautiful picture. Oh, wow. What a way to what a way to launch into this group discussion is to think about what would change, right. maybe even in not the whole world, your world, mm -hmm. if that happened. That could be absolutely amazing. So have a great discussion. Thank you, McKenna, for absolutely. joining me here. Hope you guys have a good time. Bye, y'all.